Hi, everybody, and thank you for joining us for uh, the Q&A with Director Andrei Gruzniki, um, another uh, prominent uh, Romanian director. First, I'd like to thank our partner, Norwest Film Forum, for the second incredibly successful collaboration, and to Arizona American Romanian Cultural Collaborative and Arts Detroit for joining forces with us to put together this amazing selection of Romanian films. And I do also like to thank you, um, our viewers, without whom uh, Romanian films would not have such a growing visibility. I'd like first to introduce Andrei, who is a graduate of the National Film University in Bucharest and began his career as uh, the assistant director of uh, one of the iconic Romanian directors, Lucian Pintilia. They worked on two films and one of them we actually presented before the pandemic. It's about Nikki and Flo. Andrei is a vers very versatile uh, Romanian filmmaker. He made documentaries, he made TV productions and also shorts. And I would uh, name here only two of them. A random Act of Kindness and a Chronicle of a Dead Foretold. Uh, but more importantly, I would say uh, his feature films uh, all um, won impressive awards. And I'll mention only a few. Um, he won the best uh, Romanian uh, feature uh, for the other arena at the Transylvania International Film Festival in 2009. And uh, his second feature, uh, Quad Erat Demonstratum QED, which we also presented in the 2019 edition of our festival, uh, received international awards, including the jury special prize um, at the festival in Rome and the French Critic uh, Award um, in 2014 at the Arras uh, International Film Festival. Zavera was premiered in Cairo and uh, No Rest for the Old Lady was presented um, as a world premiere at the Moscow International Film Festival earlier this year. So even by mentioning um, your um, impressive achievements, I noticed that you actually wrote the scripts or collaborated um, your script writers for all the movies you directed. Um, why is that, Andre? Well, uh, hello. First of all, uh, thanks, thanks for this great introduction. I'm quite amazed by myself. Um, well, um, due to your introduction, of course. Um, so, and thanks for, for, for inviting my, my movie and, well, myself in Seattle. It's nice to see, nice to see Seattle from, from Bucharest. Um, and, uh, well, about the script writing, it was very strange when I, when I finished the script. School. It was a time when we didn't have quite a lot of script writers. So um, in a way, we was obliged to, to, to write our, our own script. So that's why somehow the, the four or five directors from my generation doing films in, in this, uh, in this now, uh, they are writing their own scripts or they are somehow introducing their ideas to scriptwriters and working on their own uh, ideas. So it was a uh, fortune somehow. Uh -huh. But I would say this is a quite successful endeavor and uh, we are impressed with both the storytelling and the story uh, itself. And um, you tackled uh, on um, local superstitions, religious beliefs, rituals, unjustified traditions, I would say, uh, which are still alive, I would uh, presume, because they give a sense of unity to their community. And um, no rest for uh, the old lady reminded me of a Greek tragedy because of the struggle, uh, because of the fight between two sides. We, and we see Emil and Titi, great friends on each side of uh, the argument, I may say. Do you see the clash between the trust in science and irra uh, irrational beliefs as a sort of tragic reality of our century? Well, I think it's quite uh, obvious. I mean, look what's happening now <laughs> around us. 
I mean, believers and non-believers, uh, scientific approach to things versus uh, non-scientific approach. So I think it's um, some, something I thought uh, times ago it, it will, will pass, uh, will be, uh, um, how, how to say, uh, <clears throat> will, will not be anymore in this paradig paradigma, uh, but yes, uh, it's, I mean, having a bird side view on, on Mother Earth, we kind of see uh, a lot of peoples are quite religious, a lot of peoples are quite, uh, you know, having a scientific approach. So it's not, uh, you know, 90% and 10%, it's half and half somehow. So I think it's a permanent struggle between the two sides. So that's why I, I, I wanted to have this kind of two characters, the rational one and the, the more uh, intuitive one, uh, the, the, the one who doesn't, it's not a church goer, I mean, it's not a church goer. Instead, the Titi is a very believer and he thinks he's, he's seeing things. Uh, so yes, uh, I never thought about uh, Greek tragedy, I have to admit, but uh, I, I think the approach is quite, uh, quite, quite good, quite pertinent. Yeah, um, and uh, anyway, I think you were working on this film before the pandemic and before uh, all this debate, you know, in a way, um, it was something that you felt that it's part of our lives. And in an interview, you said actually that you wanted to create a new kind of cinema, that kind of cinema that uh, deals with facts, records facts and uh, observes day-to-day um, -day experiences from the point of view of the struggle that defines the passage of time. So is this movie, No Rest for the Old Lady, a combination between a feature film and an observational uh, documentary? Well, I'm, let's say I'm stretching this formula. Um, we had, uh, I had a great luck. We had the producer and me, we, we had a great luck to have the financing uh, before the pandemic and uh, deciding to shoot it, even if we didn't have all the money we needed, but deciding to shoot um, uh, one year before the, all the, this crazy stuff started. So um, in last year, we, we were just doing editing and stuff like that. So that was a great luck. Um, and yes, I was trying to, to prevent, uh, you know, the world, this uh, countryside world, this, uh, um, full of mystery, let's say, uh, universe in a, in a very um, cool way, uh, long shots, uh, wide, uh, wide angles, uh, kind of looking to these characters doing their, their, their pursuing with their lives. And um, so, um, yes. In a way, you felt like uh, letting they, them play, uh, it was more important uh, in your approach to storytelling, um, let the camera linger and record them. Uh, it, it's wonderful. I mean, it's truly powerful. And that's but why- one, when... one, should, one, one should think the, this, the, it, it was like this. Uh, yes, we should think it was like this. They were doing whatever they want and camera just uh, following them. No, it was yeah. quite, <laughs> quite uh, um, uh, well, um, how to say, uh, scripted, and and, and uh, uh, we had um, um, can I say in Romanian? It, it would be more, yes, mar please, much please. more easier from time to time. Era mai simplu să 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 avem Um, lucruri foarte bine pregătite pe care le pregăteam în, în timpul filmării, în, în, înainte de filmare am avut două săptămâni de pregătire în locație, pentru că am filmat în afara București. Și am avut aceste două săptămâni în care am pregătit cu cei doi actori toate segmente. Ei știau exact ce au de făcut și cum au de făcut. Senzația, dacă e senzația... Ok, yes. Uh, so... Uh... Andre is talking about uh, the process of preparing, shooting on location, and for two weeks the actors were prepared and ready to shoot there uh, because that was an important part of the the work. Um, right. So um, as we, we we 
went into shootings, they knew exactly what to do and how to do. And if uh, they seemed like, uh, you know, doing just uh, their life and, and the, cam the camera following them, it, it's uh, great. Uh, it was the intent, like a documentary style uh, thing, but it was quite uh, well prepared. So um, you wanted your actors to be accommodated with this uh, approach, probably. That's why you prepared yes. so yes. closely um, all of the scenes on location. And, um, and, also, and also I wanted the TT, for example, to, to be well accommodated with his chair because he never knew what, what that is. It, it was a little bit tough for him, but at mm -hmm. the end he, he did it quite well, I, I think. And also Emil, uh, which is a city people, <laughs> he never lives in a countryside, uh, to have this kind of approach to I don't know, things around him and to, to learn. And we went uh, from time to time in location to see the, um, all the um, little things in the, in the kitchen, in the bedroom. Uh, in, in the in the yard, so he had to accommodate himself with himself with all these small things. To seems like very natural to him to to work with them. Yeah, I would say your film seems seamless, and that's why I was uh, surprised when I read that you used stuntmen. Could you disclose to our viewers a scene in which you use stuntmen? Well, that is a little bit. Um, uh, because of the script, we had the, in the script we had a scene with a lot of fight in, in a bar, in the bar, in the bar you, you, you have in the film, uh, but we never shot the, the, that scene. And also we had the, the final fight in the end in the, in the graveyard. It's, uh, I was supposing it, will, it would be very tough and very macho in a way. But uh, after I had the, the cast done, I realized uh, it can't be done. <laughs> I mean, no, no way, they cannot do this kind of thing. So uh, as we had already the, the, the standman in, 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 in our cast and with us in, in the location, uh, we used him to learn them how to, how to fall, um, uh, how to um, fight a little bit, uh, not very much. So he was a useful, um, and uh, so as I said, it was a scene uh, I, I never shot because it was too dangerous in a way. And actually it was not in these characters. I mean, it was for the characters I was thinking of, but not for these uh, specific actors. So I had to change a little bit the script uh, while uh, preparing the shooting. Oh, that, that's great because that shows uh, again uh, the power of the observation and actually the forcing you <laughs> to change your initial idea. Um, you know, you know and, that a yeah. movie it, 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 it's half script, half shooting and half editing. So, uh, <laughs> you know, you, you do the mess. <laughs> and and yeah. in editing room also we, we had a lot of stuff uh, which we just put it away. You can yeah. see it on on, on Facebook, uh, on the movies Facebook. We are, there are two or three uh, short teasers, uh, which are in, incorporating the six, six sequences we didn't put in the movie. And because uh, you mentioned uh, the very last scene of the film, um, in the end we see Emil trying to unearth Miranda. Does he do it uh, to prove Titi and the villagers uh, wrong? Or does he do it because he himself is haunting by her? And I will open the floor for other uh, questions. Uh, I, I don't think he ever think about the others, about the villagers. I mean, all his uh, interest is in Titi and in Smaranda, of course. <clears throat> and uh, But I think it's he's doing this. I mean, for me, he was doing uh, this thing for proving Titi, um, OK, I'm done with that. Um, we did what we had to do. Now, Smaranda will never haunt you again if she was haunting you. So in a way, he's doing a thing he never believed in uh, for his friend, from, for friendship, you know, things we do for friendship. So that was the main idea. That was what I told to, to the actor when he, he was digging the grave. Well, actually, he was not digging the grave. It was already digged. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's true. 
Um, and it was funny because when I, when he went in in the in the gray in the in the cemetery at the end, it was after a heavy rain and the the, the grave were already full of water, so it was totally crazy to. Um, do it. Yeah, it's, uh, it was a truly a powerful scene and um, you left us, the viewers, with that uh, extreme struggle, not only um, between them, two friends um, who obviously respect and love each other, but also with the unknown in a way. Um, I will invite our viewers, uh, if they have questions, I have more, but I don't want um, to take over our conversation. Yes, Mary. Thank you, Ileana. Your questions are so good. And you've asked some of them that I was going to ask. In fact, I thought the actors were ad-libbing a lot of this movie, but in fact, it was scripted. So brilliant. Your two actors, just uh, spectacular actors and your partnership was, was incredible. Um, I wanted to comment on that last scene in the grave, when Titi is struggling and he falls against Emil. And at that moment, you know that love will prevail. You know, they still are going to have a relationship. And I wondered if you would comment on that. And secondly, um, I felt the village was its own character. I, so many of the details in those in the house in you know in the village and could you um speak on the what part the village played thank you um, thank you for uh well the village is of course very important and uh, i love this uh, this uh, kind of um, images and uh, which they are not quite uh, common in in uh, the latest romanian movies so that's why I, in a way, that's why I, I went to that area. Uh, I have to admit um, this script had a quite um, difficult, um, um, how do you say, um, uh, coming to, 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 to be a script. I mean, it took me a few years because at the beginning I had, a, I was thinking to, to write about um, uh, these um, old people which in Romania are not quite uh, very uh, well, uh, um, they are not quite, um, um, they, they don't have, uh, the, the, they have nothing to do. They are not uh, helped by the state. They have, uh, actually they are by their own uh, in, in this life. And eventually they, they can uh, grow up uh, grandchildren if they have a family. That would be their job. And uh, otherwise, uh, not, nothing. Um, and uh, the well, funny and sad part is that my father in the last years, I had to put him in a wheelchair. And it's incredibly uh, difficult to, to make him enter with this chair in any official building. I mean, I, I was at the hospital and uh, I went one day before to make sure they have a kind of elevator. And they had a, an elevator at the stair. And when I, we went next day there, they said, yes, we have an elevator, but it's not working, it's out of work. So, uh, okay. <laughs> it was um, in funny and sad in a way. So I was thinking to write about this kind of, for, for them something. And I had a very dear old lady friend, she was almost 90. And she was so full of energy and stamina and everything. She was amazing. She was amazing. And, and I thought, okay, uh, this would be one of my character, a very strong character with a positive approach to life. And that, that why, that's why I have Emil in this way. And then uh, I started um, the story of Titi and uh, it was happening in the city. And I had a chance, let's say, a couple of years ago, to work with a French uh, script doctor in a, in a, in a workshop. And uh, she, he enjoyed the, the story. And so in a couple of days, we just developed this, exactly in a nutshell, it was this story, which ended up uh, in the countryside uh, with uh, the nest, the, the, the huge nest and everything. So it was a difficult birth for, for the story. 
Uh, sorry, what about the question again? <laughs> oh, just uh, more comments and questions. Thank you. I was just raving about the actors and wondering about the, the um, I just see the village as a character in itself. And uh, thank yeah, you for answering the question. Yes, yes. And, all yes. The, and the road, for me, the road is very important. The road from their place through the, the, the village to the big uh, village to the, you know, uh, the hospital and everything yes. and i i was quite fun in in the bridge that strange bridge which i discovered doing the research there yeah. and, and the bridge was amazing it was done by by villagers there hmm. because they had no bridge in the proximity and they built a bridge for for themselves okay with the help of the mayor and everything they, they built this bridge which is a crazy thing it's crazy. Thank you. Brilliant film and so human. So human. It really touched my heart. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, the, the bridge scene is so symbolic, as you said, uh, Andre, uh, all the roads going to the city, going to the cemetery, taking you to the church and to those uh, steep stairs <laughs> to get to the father and have a conversation with him. I thought that the bridge uh, must have had a, a symbolic meaning beyond um, any symbolism that you obviously attach to the road motif. What would be that symbolism uh, that's... Um, you placed on the bridge scene? Well, a uh, bridge, it's a bridge. <laughs> um, but in that particular place, uh, what I was amazed is they have uh, this uh, habit to put um, crosses of deer's one near uh, any kind of water. And in one scene, we can see um, the, the motor coming and to going to the bridge and we can see the, the crosses near the, the river, but they have this uh, habit in almost every place they have a water. It could be a fountain, it could be a, ridge, uh, uh, a river, it could be anything. They put this kind of it's a symbolic thing. They are not people buried there. It just, they are just crosses of the earth one put, put it in, in these places where the roads are cross, crossing with the water. So it's a um, local symbolism of uh, passing through, I think. I mean, about, it's about water and the going to the other, you know, universe. Um, this is a special uh, area in, in Romania, somehow in the south, to uh, from kind of a, a Dolge, old, if you know, uh, going somehow down to, to, the, to the Danube uh, River. I can talk about a lot about this kind of the, the research I did in, in that place, so it just stopped me. <laughs> yeah, uh, I felt that you were attracted by this region. Um, and I know people from Oltenia uh, who even today um, follow rituals. They don't know from where they inherited, actually. And uh, for me, the bridge was a symbol, of, you know, like care on boat crossing the river. Um, uh, and uh, entering the unknown of the death and all that. But obviously it is much more than that. And that's why I asked the question because I noticed the crosses and I presumed, you know, they represent the, or they mark the place where some um, got drowned or uh, lost their lives in an accident, but it's no, not- No, it was just that. very symbolic, just to put the cross near the, the water. And uh, is this the same region where we have this um, habit with um, uh, the stories with the Moroi, with the, this kind of uh, vampire, ghost, ghost. Yeah. and uh, which in a way resembles to the D book, uh, the, the Jewish D book, which was coming from the Poland region at, at the time. Uh, so they are quite similar. Um, but we have, they have this uh, habit, which I put it in the end of, in, in the movie, uh, to. Um, um, celebrate and uh, do all the death ritual be before the death, uh, thinking that uh, no one will have, you have no one to, to do this ritual after your death, so uh, you had to do it when still you can and alive. And, uh, uh, and, and when I was doing the research in uh, this uh, region, uh, we was quite near the, to Danube, and I was talking to people, uh, old people, and they said, yes, of course we did it. Uh, 
we are doing it every year. What? <laughs> yes, so they, they just did it every year, waiting to the great uh, passing through. Um, I have a question. Um, so there are a few um, um, superstitions in the film, and I was wondering how many of them are common superstitions and if any of them were created just for the purpose of the film. Uh, nothing is created for, for, okay. for, for the purpose of this film. Everything is it's, uh, it's from the real life. I mean, I, this one is one thing I, I'm very fond and I'm very interested in to have uh, uh, all the things I'm putting in the film very well documented. So I'm not, I'm playing with this, with this kind of thing, but I want to have them quite well documented and you know, starting from the real thing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I imagine, okay, uh, the scene, the crazy scene at the end with uh, Titi in, in, uh, in the coffin uh, and the two ladies, it was a little bit uh, invented, <laughs> but the reality of these kind of scenes, uh, it's there. So it, they are trying the coffin, they are doing these things. Uh, Titi, even Titi, which is uh, from th that region, he is from Craiova, he knew about this kind of this uh, these stories. So he had these stories in, in his background. You mean Unlike the Emil. actor? Uh, uh, Titi the actor. Titi the actor. I mean uh, De La Queza, Mr. De La Queza. He's from uh, from Craiova, that region. And uh, he had all this um, story in, in his background. Yeah, amazing. Um, I have a question too. I noticed the uh, uh, there's another film in the festival, Entregalde by Radu Muntean, that takes us back to the village. You know, there's like, like Mary said, the village in itself and the people living there are the characters. And I was wondering, um, and the way you, you were talking about the film, um, is there like a, a growing awareness about the gap uh, between the city now and the, the, these people, the village, the Romanian village? And, uh, and with all the universe of superstitions and all beliefs and traditions that they still preserve and then the city that's trying. Is this gap um, very dividing now? And um, there, is there an awareness among the artists that there is some, you know, in a way, you, some necessity to use film you know, as a, as a civic action to preserve that world or to talk, to translate that world, you know, to generations like ours, because I'm sure, you know, it's especially kids growing up here in the Romanian diaspora would be like very shocked to hear how present, you know, these, uh, these uh, beliefs are actually still are. So. Um... I wouldn't know. <laughs> well, um... I, I I don't know uh, Radu's uh, movie. I, I knew I heard about it, it but I, I don't know the movie. I, I didn't had to, the chance to see it. Uh, but what can I say about um, myself? I'm not. Uh, I'm interested about these um, habits and and uh, uh, this kind of um, non uh, non city environment. But uh, for me, it's more important maybe which I'm trying now, I'm trying to write a, a new story, which is located also in a forest, um, somehow in Transylvania, because my, well, my, my uh, father um, is coming from there. So, so I, I'm putting something in a place I know. Uh, I'm more interested uh, about the gap between um, uh, nature and, 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 and um, this kind of uh, metropola, this kind mm -hmm. of... Uh, in person, in personal cities in which we are, we are living now, between walls and in the concrete world, so I'm more interested about uh, this, uh, this um, you know, difference and the impact we have on uh, on the, the nature, on the forest, and what can it, what can the forest do if he's very angry, in a way, mm -hmm. and nature. So yeah, for, for me, it's, it's, it's a little bit here. Yeah. 
I had the, the impression when I was watching the film, by the way, wonderful news. I have to, wonderful film. I wanted to uh, join Mary and <laughs> Ileana in, uh, in uh, expressing my admiration for your film, uh, really. And I know everybody else who watched it had the same uh, reaction. They all loved it and were very impressed and touched by, by the vulner vulnerability of the characters and also by the, the story was, was um, you know, uh, unravels so brilliantly, you know, there's no glitch really, you know, and um, yeah, uh, the ending also. So congrats again. Um, about the characters, I was wondering if there's, are there, are they like city people that decided to retire in the village? Or, because I feel like the, you know, Emil is like, in a way, because of his beliefs, you know, do do we find you know it was I was wondering what was his background you know how come you know he was a non-believer in an environment where everybody believes you know I mean he seemed so, such a you know in a way atypical character for it felt like he was an implant you know kind of you know more than you know so I was wondering if you could tell us more about his um, story you know yeah um, sure uh, thanks for the good uh, words. And uh, well, as I said, the editing is a very important uh, tool in making a movie. <clears throat> so um, when we had uh, all the scenes put it together, I had a kind of maybe three hours movie. So we uh, and we decided to to cut a little bit from it, and then we we went to uh, San Sebastian in a work in progress. Uh, um, festival and um, we showed the movie. It's quite, it was two hours and something, and we had some feedbacks. And then I cut it a little bit more. <laughs> so there are a lot of scenes, so you don't, uh, or, or or a lot of scenes are more short, much more shorter than it uh, was supposed to be. So a lot of information is lost in this process, and it was the information about uh, the background about. Uh, the fact that actually Emil, uh, they are both from here. They are both uh, living in, the, they, they were grown up in this place. Uh, but Emil was working in a city nearby. And so all the all his life, he was doing this kind of, uh, of commuting. And uh, that, was, that was why, uh, in a way, he was more open to new and to science. And uh, he uh, was involved with uh, the Greek lady, Smaranda, which becomes, which became become became his uh, his wife, but that's why uh, in a way uh, little by little he lost her because he was all the time uh, traveling and working and uh, sometimes he was not uh, very present he was not very kind and she was upset and that was the um, you know the situation that um, Titi could take advantage in a way. For a good meal, for example. Um, so yes, he's um, from from that place, but he he was traveling a lot uh, around, and working in the city. Yeah, thank you, Andre. And uh, I have a question because, uh, and I think uh, Mary, you will agree with me to ask this question because we both all here love music and love authentic folk Romanian music. What was the role um, in the economy of the film of the folk musician who opens uh, with a raw music, with that uh, kind of sharp uh, sound of the violin? And you open the movie with him and you close the movie with him. And at one point, uh, you inserted another uh, scene with um, this beautiful uh, music and uh, powerful performance. Well, uh... Of course, it was not in the script. I never thought I could find something like that. But uh, in, in the research period, we um, uh, preparing the shooting in the, in the graveyard. Um, the priest was very kind. And actually, this uh, man, man was his uh, first ad. Let's say he was a cantor, and he was singing. And he's in, the, in one of the scenes at the beginning, uh, helping the um, act the actor priest doing the, the, the sermon. Um, 
And so um, he was um, very nice and he, he, we, I talked to him and he said, yes, I'm doing uh, this and that. I'm, I'm composing music, I'm writing, I, I'm singing at the violin. And uh, so I became interested and I, 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 I asked him to, to play something for me. And he came with the violin and he played and uh, I decided, okay, let's shoot the guy and then we see uh, what happening. And at the end, um, we, I had this, um, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes of, of, uh, of, from his songs. And uh, I picked this one because it's talking about uh, getting old and uh, about uh, all this thing. And I, I thought uh, that with the, with the editor, uh, we just did it together. It's not just my fault. I thought it would be uh, good to emphasize uh, once more what you said at the beginning, this kind of, uh, you know, um, documentary kind of look on the village. I mean, he was like a Greek narrator, if you want, from somewhere, um, putting this uh, music and everything in kind of an order, cosmic order. So it was a little bit like that. But it came in in the editing. So as I said, half half script, half shooting, half edit, editing. Thank you. This is so very interesting. So in your last story, you said um, it was just kind of luck that you met this cantor and he became part of your film. So what part does luck and serendipity play in filmmaking? Uh, we had a great luck to shoot the movie before the pandemic started. Yes. For example, uh, I had the great luck to to find Emil uh, in the last days of looking for for a great actor because we had a lot of great actors uh, here, but at this age, a lot of them said no because of this um, shooting in the countryside for two months at their age because I wanted to have. Uh, their age is around 80 and they are actually the, the actors are around 80. Mm. Uh, I'm not it was easy to, to take a 70 years old and make up him and sell it like an 80 80 years old man but I didn't want that maybe this is one of the stuff I taught from Delia. Um, so uh, I wanted to have 80 years old actors and it's very difficult to work somehow with, with them because of the age. And that was why a lot of them said no because they, they were quite scared to, to go there. So uh, I had the list which was smaller and smaller and smaller. And the last one on the list, uh, Emil, he said uh, yes. <laughs> it was like, it was my birthday when he said yes. I'm coming. Okay, in two weeks we are going to that place and starting to pick and to shoot. So, it's a... thank you. Very interesting. I think all of us in our lives are fortunate to have luck shine on us from time to time. What was the what was your luckiest break in your filmmaking career? Well, I think the luckiest break when was uh, quite when I. I, I was finishing the school and I went to my uh, teacher, uh, Stere Gula, she, uh, she's, uh, he's a director, he, he, he directed the Morometi, maybe you know. And uh, I, I said, okay, I would like to, to work in a movie, in a real movie. I did some, I, I just, uh, I, I, I was in a crazy movie uh, uh, before that. So I, I just want to, wanted to, to, to work with a real director. And he said, okay, okay, um, I'll talk to, to Lucian who is uh, going in, in, in uh, shooting now. I, I said, Lucian, and didn't knew who Lucian is. Lucian, it's Lucian, okay. And I said, okay, 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 I, I'll, I'll call the producer. And I called the producer and he said, okay, so you're gonna work with Mr. Pintilia. <laughs> I said, what? <laughs> yes, because he's Lucian Pintilia. I never, it never crossed my mind Lucian is Lucian Pintili. I mean, it was like, so I said, okay. So that, that's how it started, working with Lucian. Fantastic. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank you for me reminding me that. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing uh, that you share with us uh, uh, this tremendous, uh, you know, memory. 
Um, and I, I would have uh, one last question for you because, you know, in the States, we have uh, a lot of uh, programs dedicated to um, the study of aging and, you know, addressing um, the growing older population's needs. And by choosing to, to make this film, I think uh, I felt like you wanted to make a statement about uh, aging and the lives of uh, the elderly ones in Romania. Basically, Absolutely. what made you make this movie? Absolutely. And, and uh, Emil, um, I mean, uh, uh, Andrescu, he, he understood it very well. And he said, actually, it's, it's, it's a movie about loneliness about being lonely at this age and having to struggle to with all the things uh, that, that are around us. And I said, yes, that's the point. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I hope you change something in the um, Romanian's perspective on aging, because whenever I go back, uh, I feel, I mean, uh, I feel sorry uh, and I am saddened by the way in which younger generations mistreat the elderly. And I see them addressing him politely uh, in a familiar way. They, there is no respect for the elderly, no matter uh, what the background they come from and how much they can still contribute to the Romanian society with their expertise, with their experience, life experience. I feel this gap is getting uh, uh, you know, larger and larger and should not be that way. So I do believe. Hopefully, uh, yes. Hopefully, it will help. Yeah, I, I do believe your um, film will uh, draw um, their attention and change uh, the attitude. Truly, it needs to be changed, and more films like um, "No Rest for the Old Lady" um, should be uh, brought to light. Um, I don't know, Otilia, if you see questions uh, coming from Facebook or. No. No other questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, no other questions. Um, I do have a question about the reception of the film in Romania, since Ilana, well, I think it's very important. Again, you were talking about the most, in the, your film about the most, what I see the most vulnerable, uh, you know, age group in Romania, actually, because I don't think there is any, you know, programs, and I know I had a, a sick mother, um, and I, we had to take care of her from being here, and there's no support actually for for the elderly, like Ilana said, and um, I, I was, yeah, I, I was wondering um, how the film was re recepted. If you showed it in cinemas, if um, you you ha if you had some concrete results, you know. Yes, it was in, uh, in the festivals, it, it was in Cluj, uh, <clears throat> then uh, it was in a lot of uh, cities uh, linked to his, with uh, the Cluj festival, uh, Sibiu, Arad, uh, Yash. Uh, so it, it went to, to, to Romania, through Romania. It was in, uh, in the cinemas also, and uh, starting from, I think, 20, 20, 20 of November. It will uh, go on uh, Romanian net Netflix Romania. Oh, so, excellent. Uh, Congrats. Thanks. Excellent. Uh, otherwise, we've been with, with, with the movie in, uh, it was in Beijing in the film festival. Also, we've been in uh, yeah, Erevan. And actually, we was in Erevan with the producer, <laughs> which is, <laughs> was quite, quite, uh, quite funny. Um, so, um, I don't know, it, it, it's quite seen. The movie. Um, I'm not sure if it will change by itself the mentality and the perception, but at least it will uh, be a base on our discussions. And hopefully, that will help. At least regarding wheelchairs. <laughs> that's my that's my problem. <laughs> that's my issue. Yeah. We have the last question, uh, Andre. Um, can you uh, share with us the project on uh, which you are working now? You mentioned it before, but without disclosing much. Uh. 
uh, well, yes, I, um, there are a lot of, it's not just one, but one of them is more developed, let's say, and uh, it's about this, um, um, this gathering in a, in, a, in a wildness, in a forest uh, uh, of a family which is coming across the, all the countries from Europe and everything. Uh, because of the death of the grand grand grandfather who is 102 years old, and everything is revolving around uh, the heritage he is supposed to leave and uh, um, the family which is uh, coming back and trying to regain their roots. Nice. We would love to have this film in Seattle, uh, isn't it? <laughs> okay, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, I'll do it and I'll come with it. <laughs> Yes, it would be, be great. Yeah, it'd be thank wonderful you. to have you here in person. Yeah, thank you. It would be great to see. And I, I, I'll text uh, immediately to to Julia to say I, I, I was in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. Yeah, Julia Rugina is a big fan, a friend and friend of uh, uh, the Romanian Film Festival, and she's been to Seattle a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah, she she was so quite. It's your time now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Andre, uh, thank you. Thank you. for your answers and uh, for this uh, tremendous achievement, which is um, your most recent film, No Rest for the Old Lady. Thank you Thanks very much. Thank, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Good luck with you. Thank you. Thank you.